In 1918, the First World War ended with the Entente victory and Germany was given a humiliating peace treaty in which it lost a lot of land and population. Despite the Allied effort to stop the German threat, it appeared again under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, who began to expand, attacking Poland and starting the Second World War. Even though France had a significant superiority in military over Germany, their first offensive would not be as successful as they thought to be. In the last months of the First World War, Germany attempted a large offensive to put the French forces down, but it got repelled, and after an Allied counter-offensive, they had to sign an armistice ending the war. Germany had to give territories to France, Belgium, Denmark, and the newly created Poland, which gained the Polish corridor, splitting Germany in two. Germany also had to get rid of its colonies. Heavy artillery like tanks or planes had to demilitarize the Rhineland, pay significant war reparations and limiting the army to only 100,000 men. In 1921, the French army and the Polish army made a defensive alliance against Germany in their military convention. Years of crisis led to the rise of far right in the country and eventually Hitler with his Nazi party gained power over Germany. Their plan was to bring the nation to its former glory. In 1935, they reintroduced conscription and began to arm itself, violating the Treaty of Versailles that limited the size of the German army. In 1936, the German army marched in the demilitarized Rhineland and occupied it. Their orders were to retreat in case of a French intervention that didn't happen. In 1938, they annexed Austria and had interests to invade the Sudetenland, but the Allies met with Hitler negotiating the solution to the problem. They gave the Nazis free hand to occupy the Sudetenland, but to not go further than it, which Hitler didn't respect and invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia. Now he turned his eyes to Poland, but the Allies threatened with war. The Germans, who wanted to expand, they didn't want to fight on two fronts, so they allied with the Soviet Union. On 1st of September, they began moving into Polish territory, triggering the British and French governments to declare war on Nazi Germany. According to the convention, the French army was to start preparations for the major offensive three days after mobilization started. The French forces were to effectively gain control over the area between the French border and the Siegfried Line and were to probe the German defenses. The sector was defended by the German First Army. On the 15th day of the mobilization, that is, on 16 September, the French army was to start a full-scale assault on Germany. The PRI emptive mobilization was started in France on 26 August, and on 1 September, full mobilization was declared. French mobilization suffered from an inherently out-of-date system, which greatly affected their ability to swiftly deploy their forces on the field. The French command still believed in the tactics of World War I, which relied heavily on stationary artillery, even though this took time to transport and deploy. Many pieces also had to be retrieved from storage before any advance could be made. Almost everyone expected a major French attack on the Western Front soon after the start of the war, but Britain and France were cautious as both feared large German air attacks on their cities. They did not know that 90% of German frontline aircraft were in Poland, nor did they realize that the few German units that were holding the line had effectively been paired to the bone and stripped of any real fighting capability, leaving the French unknowingly with a 3 to 1 advantage. Consequently, what followed was what historian Roger Morehouse called a sham offensive on the Saar that began on 7 September, four days after France declared war on Germany. The Wehrmacht was engaged in the attack on Poland, and the French enjoyed a decisive numerical advantage along the border with Germany, but the French did not take any action that was able to assist the Poles. Eleven French divisions, part of the 2nd Army Group, advanced along a 32 km near Saarbrücken against weak German opposition. The French army advanced to as far as 8 km in some areas and captured about 12 towns and villages with no resistance. Gershom, Medelsheim, Ichen, Niedergalbach, Bliesmann-Gen, Ludweiler, Brenchelbach, Lauterbach, Niedeltdorf, Kleinblittersdorf, Ausmaker, and Sidiswald occasionally called Hitler's Dorf in some French reports. Four Renewer 35 tanks were destroyed by mines north of Bleisbruck. By 9 September, the French occupied most of the Wart Forest, 
On 10 September, while a minor German counterattack retook the village of Apac, French forces reversed the loss only hours later. The French 32nd Infantry Regiment made further gains on 12 September, seizing the German town of Brenchelbach with the loss of one captain, one sergeant and seven privates. Near the meeting point of the French, German and Luxembourgeois borders, the Schengen Bridge was destroyed. The offensive was halted after French forces had taken the 7 square kilometer Wart Forest, which had been heavily mined by the Germans. The French stopped short of the Siegfried Line, although they came within a few kilometers south of it, immediately east of Saarbrücken. The French held German territory along all of the Rhine-Moselle front, but after the collapse of Poland, General Maurice Gamelin on 21 September ordered French units to return to their starting positions on the Maginot Line. Some French generals, such as Henry Giraud, saw the withdrawal as a wasted opportunity and made known their disagreement with it. As the withdrawal was taking place, on 28 September, a counterattack by the German 18th Infantry Regiment from the then newly formed 52nd Division in the area between Bishmisham and Omersheim was repelled by French forces. On 17 October, the withdrawal was complete. There had been about 2,000 French casualties killed, wounded or sick. The Polish Army General Plan for Defense, Plan West, assumed that the Allied offensive on the Western Front would provide a significant relief to the Polish Front in the East. However, the limited and half-hearted Tsar offensive did not result in any diversion of German troops. The 40 Division all-out assault never materialized. On 12 September, the Anglo-French Supreme War Council gathered for the first time at Arbeville in France. It was decided that all offensive actions were to be halted immediately. General Maurice Gamelin ordered his troops to stop not closer than one kilometer from the German positions along the Siegfried Line. Poland was not notified of this decision. Instead, Gamelin informed Marshal Edward Ritz Smigley that half of his divisions were in contact with the enemy and that French advances had forced the Wehrmacht to withdraw at least six divisions from Poland. The following day, the commander of the French military mission to Poland, General Louis Fory, informed the Polish Chief of Staff, General Vaclav Stakiewicz, that the planned major offensive on the Western Front had to be postponed from 17 to 20 September. From 16 to 17 October, the German army, now reinforced with troops returning from the Polish campaign, conducted a counter-offensive that retook the remainder of the lost territory, still held by French covering forces, which withdrew as planned. German reports acknowledged the loss of 196 soldiers, plus 114 missing and 356 wounded. They also claimed that 11 of their aircraft had been shot down as far as 17 October. The French suffered around 2,000 casualties. By then, all French divisions had been ordered to retreat to their barracks along the Maginot Line. The phony war had begun. At the Nuremberg trials, German military commander Alfred Jodl said that if we did not collapse already in the year 1939, that was due only to the fact that during the Polish campaign, the approximately 110 French and British divisions in the West were held completely inactive against the 23 German divisions. General Siegfried Westfall stated that if the French had attacked in full force in September 1939, the German army could only have held out for one or two weeks. 